All four Gospels of the New Testament, those of Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John give testimony to the last days of Jesus. And within the span of a week, Jesus went from being declared King of the Jews on Sunday to arrested on Thursday and dead by Friday. Jesus knew of his fate beforehand and even told his disciples that one of them, Judas, would betray him and that Peter would deny him three times before the crow of the rooster was heard. And this all indeed came to pass. In his trial before Pontius Pilate, Jesus stood silent, refusing to plead his own case. A governor under the Roman emperor, Tiberius, Pilate was known to waver in his policies and incite social unrest among the Jews. He most likely was tired of trying to maintain peace in a foreign land with people who had a religion he did not understand nor respect. Before the trial, Pilate's wife told him of a prophetic dream she had about Jesus and urged him to have nothing to do with that innocent man. At the trial, the Jewish chief priests and elders demanded that Jesus be crucified. They were jealous of Jesus' anointing and favor with God. They didn't want to acknowledge his importance to all of the world. And these priests and elders even incited the crowds to scream for Jesus' death. It was customary to give a pardon before the feast of Passover. And even though Pilate knew of Jesus' innocence, he disregarded his wife's warning and didn't release Jesus. He instead gave the angry mob a choice of releasing Jesus or another prisoner to satisfy their bloodlust. This other prisoner was Barabbas, a shameless killer. In Matthew chapter 27, verse 16, Barabbas is called a notorious prisoner. In Mark chapter 15, verse 7, and in Luke chapter 23, verse 19, it states he was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection against the occupying Roman forces, while John chapter 18, verse 40 describes him as a bandit. The crowd chose Barabbas, and Jesus, an innocent man of perfect moral character who had never sinned a day in his life, was hung on a cross to die. The traitorous Pharisees and their followers chose Barabbas because he was of no threat to them. Barabbas demanded nothing from them. No self-examination, no repentance, no acts of mercy or forgiveness. Letting him go was the easy way out. Jesus, on the other hand, made people uncomfortable. He was a radical who publicly exposed the religious hypocrisy of the Pharisees while treating women, the poor, the sick, and the powerless as people worthy of love and respect. And Jesus is still talked about and is still making people feel uncomfortable. All of Christianity makes people feel uncomfortable. And many are still choosing Barabbas every day. Choosing Barabbas doesn't demand truth. It doesn't demand growth. It doesn't demand introspection or repentance or changing one's lifestyle. It doesn't demand sacrifices. Choosing Barabbas means doing what we want, when we want, and how we want. The mantra of the Satanic Church is do as thou wilt. Satan wants us to do as we please. He wants us to make up our own rules of moral fortitude and sin. He knows that God's rules in the way we are to live are very clear, concise, and require moral perfection. This doesn't mean that we have to be perfect, but God expects us to always strive for holiness. And if Satan can get you away from God's laws, then he knows he's won. He has slowly over time made things that were shameful and unacceptable years ago very acceptable and commonplace now. Anything goes in this day and age. And these things are all affronts to God. God is merciful and loving, but he is also jealous and just. He does not abide by sin or putting things in your life before him. So when you choose Barabbas, you are falling right into Satan's trap. And if you fall into Satan's trap, you will suffer the wrath of God's correction upon you. For many, the truth points out things that they'd rather not hear. It makes them defensive, angry, and irrational until choosing Barabbas becomes second nature, like breathing. This is especially the case with atheists. They know that it's not logical to believe that nothing created everything. You can point out all the factual and scientific evidence in the Bible that is being upheld by science to this day, and they still won't believe in God. 
They cling to their non-belief because abandoning it would mean they'd have to give up their freedom, their pornography, their adultery, and all the other sins they want to keep doing. They don't want a father figure in the clouds looking upon them and judging their every move. It makes them uncomfortable. They think that if you ignore something, it'll go away. And so they stay in denial of the truth that there is a God and his son died on the cross for our sins. And many others who do believe in God and Jesus have recrafted their own truth in creating a God who is always happy, loving, and never judgmental. Nothing could be further from the truth. Saying a sinner's prayer and then going about your life isn't living by God's word or living in reality. You must believe and you must turn from sin. And that also means turning away from those preachers who only preach feel-good motivational speeches. If they are not warning you about sin, they are false preachers and prophets. Feel-good speeches are nice to hear, but they aren't rooted in scripture. If you need a life coach, then a feel-good speech can come in very handy. They can give you confidence or help you get out of a slump. The Bible's main message is to worship God and not sin. The Bible doesn't convey messages to pump up the reader's ego. It tells us that we should humble ourselves, believe and trust in God, and live our lives to serve Him. Self-discovery and empowerment are valuable, but they are secondary to doing the will of God and putting Him before your own wants and desires. Nothing more is known about Barabbas. The Bible doesn't tell us if he continued with his life of crime, if he knew or cared about what happened to Jesus, or if he changed his ways. Knowing the story of Barabbas should make us all think about the choices we're making. Let's get it right this time. Let us choose Jesus.